If a criminal group can kill 3,000 of us in broad daylight and suspend the laws of physics and sell this to the people and launch illegal wars and kill over a million Iraqis and lie about WMDs in a premeditated fashion, none of us are safe because this same system is still in control whether we have George Bush, Barack Obama, or somebody like Rick Perry. Where's my motherfucking soldiers at? It's like we're living in a cage with invisible walls The wicked zeitgeist of life making grown men crawl On their knees begging please save us from the boogeymen Funded by the CIA funneled through Arabian banks Like a shank to the neck They hit you from the back, no sweat Ho check and watch us shake And take away your freedom, you really don't need them When you're tucked away safe and protected by FEMA Then you must be a dreamer like the great pretender Ask the second amendment why I'll never surrender But I'll never plead the fifth when it comes to September I'ma yell it from the roof and expose the agenda yeah. Time to wake up and open your eyes to the matrix This is going out to the truth as a patriot Living free and dying hard, speaking through battle scars An army of one becomes a global resistance Time to wake up and open your eyes to the matrix This is going out to the truth as a patriot Living free and dying hard, speaking through battle scars An army of one becomes a global resistance Like I was chosen by God, I was sent with a message To destroy the new world order and dispose of the rest Wreck your job been broken and tested, reconstructed, invested, injected with truth. Now the truth has me restless, distressed and aggravated as I rally the masses. Out to make you see what I see when I wear my sunglasses. Watch me singing like a bee, but my name ain't Cash. When we confront the tyranny, give them 33 lashes of truth for the youth, for the red, white, and blue. Fuck the mark of the devil and the NAU. Bilderberg, CFR, keep your new world order. We'll live as free men or we'll die as free souls. It's time to wake up and open your eyes. To the Matrix, this is going out to the truth as a Patriot. What's up, folks? Permanent Patriot. Talking about some more Clinton corruption today. And um, some toys spying on your kids, which is ridiculous. Um, I don't know if these toys actually come with something on the box or something saying... That there's a microphone in the fucking belt of your Barbie or inside of the doll that, or something that you're buying, the toy that you're buying. But that is absolutely ridiculous. As far as Clinton, uh, these fucking schmucks keep saying they're broke. How much money have they made since Bill's left office? That's not even, that's just between 2007 and 2014. So, I mean, add on. I mean, I can, I can add, you know, I'm, I'm horrible at math, but fuck, folks. It's incredible. This is the most corrupt family in history, for sure. As far as evilness... Ah, I'll give that to the Bushes. These fucking people are... Mafia. Straight up Mafia. And how many... How many people have showed up dead? Or... Bill has paid off? Or Hillary has threatened? Let's get this straight. Hillary is the one that has people killed. Let's get that straight. Over 50,000 she sat her hand in. Probably fucking way more than that. But she's the one that silences these people that come out against Bill saying he raped me. And just like this radio show that I'm going to show you talks about Pretty cool radio show. I like them guys. Um, just like that's going to point out, they make some real good points on there. But yes, a lot of people, folks, have been killed. And it's the same with every president. But there's so much shit piling up on Hillary, it's not funny. I could easily see her becoming president. And I'm telling you right now, I keep telling you, and I will keep telling you. It's going to be Bush or Clinton. 
And that's that. So get used to it. Or fucking do something about it. Um, I think if you look at things, add them get together, it's very obvious. I mean, I actually got this article from The Blaze. I never go to The Blaze. This man is a slimy piece of shit. So is his wife. And just do a search of it. How much have the Clintons made since Bill left office? And you'll get dozens and dozens and dozens of them. Go to OpenSecrets.org. They'll show you, they show you fucking how much money people have. Folks, listen. A, a senator, a governor, is supposed to make what? Let's give them... Let's give them a conservative number. Let's say 500000 a year. That's way more than... That's not even it. But let's just say that. Nancy Pelosi, Dianne Feinstein, they both come into office with shit. Bunk. Zip. Zero. Nada. Very first fucking year. They've got like... 50 million or more dollars in their fucking bank account. Hello? 50 million or more. I want to be governor. <laughs> I want to be senator. It's the fucking mafia. Hillary's tax returns. Uh, Clinton scored paid, paid speeches. You should see what these fucking people get paid for speaking their bullshit. I think Hillary got like 250 grand for a fucking hour speech. Somewhere for about bullshit. Here's one right here. What's this? Uh, between 2001 2012. Clinton made 13 speeches for which he was paid 500,000 or more. Eleven of those speeches were at least eight years after he left office. <laughs> PolitiFact. That's another good place to get some politics. There you go. Fact checking. Do some fact checking on anybody. Look, it, I mean, donations to the Clinton Foundation. That's what could fucking destroy this woman. She should already be in fucking jail. How she's still walking around? Well, to ask yourself how Obama's still walking around. They fucking work together. This is... The country has been taken over. I don't know if people get that. So, I was over here on Wiki World Order. Um, I don't know. It's still in beta. But, I found this pretty interesting. That they start... Mentioning Infowars. Now there's only two people that ever mention Infowars. Uh, publicly, anyways. Hillary Clinton, when she said, We are losing the Infowar. And Alex Jones, his show, Infowars. Which, by the way, Alex will tell you time and time again, he hates the name Infowars. And he never wanted the show to be called InfoWars. He just wanted the Alex Jones show. They fucking pushed InfoWars on him. Whatever. Another story. But anyways, it goes into talking about that. And, you know, the Wiki World Order Report, initially named InfoWar and Peace, acts as an outlet for any writings and artwork. I have to complement my learning process to building my InfoWar research database. So obviously... This is just one person doing this page. But the only reason that I came to the page was um, for that don't phallus me thing. But he's talking about, um, I mean, he sounds like a, a straight up patriot, but he's using the info war term in, in a way that sounds like he's trying to discredit them. But anyways, so the nine files I can mount there. Smart, smart phones. How about those? And so there is don't pass me bro .com. It's a pretty good site. Uh, I'm still questioning it, but it's got some cool stuff on there. 
like from their bottom, don't fallis me bro dot com. You go here. Now wait a minute. And then they got these crazy gangs on here. <laughs> these efforts these efforts weigh on me every time. I as commander in chief I have to sign a letter to the family that has lost a loved one or look into the eyes of a service member who has been gravely wounded. And it says, select the one clearest logically fallacy in the example and click the pop bubble below. <laughs> okay. And there's, there's all sorts of fucking different ones on here. So you check that out. It's on uh, Wiki World Order. Or you just go uh, don't fallis me bro dot com. Don't fallis me bro dot com. Uh, don't fallis me dot me. I'm thinking of that fucking dude who said don't taser me bro. I just seen that earlier again. It's funny. It's still funny. But I mean ask yourself why they fucking tased the guy. He was like okay I'm going. Wasn't bothering anyone. They just fucking walk up to him. <laughs> Welcome to the new world order, pal. So, yeah, uh, everyone out there that does checkups on websites, nice little project for you. Look into this fucker. But, um, check these dudes out. Um, it's a good radio show, that's all I can say. Uh, they remind me of me. So, Check out the shit about Clinton and your toys. Toys spying on your kids. I mean, they're putting shit in, in the fucking toys. Microphones. Who the fuck knows where they put microphones? There could be one in your toilet paper dispenser. God bless and carry on. Hillary's email gate could expose the Clinton Foundation. Follow the money. That's the apocryphal phrase attributed to Watergate, whistleblower, deep throat. And that explains why the biggest threat to Hillary Rodham Clinton's presidential dreams is not her emails. It's the Clinton Foundation. That's where the money is. The corporate money, the foreign money, the gobs of money sloshing around in vanity charities that could actually be renamed Clinton Conflicts of Interest Foundation. So what about the emails? Hillary's secret communications cache is a bombshell deserving of full disclosure because of her assault on government transparency and electronic security. But its greatest relevancy is what the emails might reveal about any nexus between Clinton's work at state and donations to the Bill, Hillary, and Chelsea Clinton Foundation from U.S. corporations and foreign nations. One of his longest-serving advisors, a person who had worked directly for the foundation, told the National Journal, The longtime whispers of pay-to-play are going to become shouts. That person, a Clinton loyalist and credible source, has no evidence of wrongdoing, but said the media's suspicions are warranted. The emails are a related but secondary scandal. Follow the foundation money. He has resurfaced. Reportedly, Berger is now an advisor to the presidential campaign of Hillary Rodham Clinton. It's either that he's really good at foreign policy, which I doubt, or he knows something, <laughs> or they owe him. And I think that's what it is. Do I think uh, he should be advising Hillary Clinton? I think he's a perfect candidate to advise Hillary Clinton. He's sleazy, he broke the law, he will do her bidding. Uh, he should be her chief of staff, as a matter of fact. Hillary is tough on terror as long as it's popular. But once again, the real Hillary Clinton remains a mystery. We went through all the speeches that were posted on her website, some 200 of them, and there's no speech that's about counterterrorism or talks about the threat to the homeland. Whatever Mrs. Clinton took away from the 9-11 experience is now slipping away. Or perhaps she never meant it in the first place. But as far as I know, Senator Clinton simply has not wanted 
to discuss with clarity and certainly with uh, the kind of authority you would expect from a now senior member of the Senate Armed Services Committee, that we are at war with a totalitarian ideology. I'd like to see a president in either party uh, who is going to be honest about the nature of the danger and willing to stand up and say this is what needs to be done even if it's not popular at the moment. She doesn't seem to have any instinct to be able to do that, whatever her high intelligence might be. Who is the real Hillary Clinton? Clinton scholars and writers hoping for an answer were shocked to learn that, despite Freedom of Information Act stipulations, after three years, the Clinton Library has only released one half of one percent of its records. This is the mentality of a tyranny, and yet the media treats this as if it's no big deal. It is a very, very big deal. We paid for those documents at that library. Much of our money goes into that library. It's a federally run operation. The Clinton Library is known locally as Little Rock's Fort Knox. Nearly two million pages of records covering Hillary's years in the White House are locked away, clouding her role in policymaking. Over 300 Freedom of Information Act requests are pending. Well, that's not my decision to make, and I don't believe that any president or first lady ever has, but certainly we'll move as quickly as our circumstances and the processes of the National Archives permits. This idea they're claiming now that, that um, oh, we're, we're trying to release them, we're trying to as fast as we can, but, but the library just won't let us release them. You want the papers released, order the papers released. They're your papers. A tendency of this administration from the top all the way to the bottom is to withhold information, to resist legitimate requests for information, to refuse to be forthcoming about information that is of significance and relevant to the job that all of you do and the interests of the American people. I think the American people have a right to as much of the public record as possible about Hillary Clinton. Those records should be released before the 2008 election so we can learn a lot more about exactly how much influence she had in the White House, what her positions were in the White House, and how she acted in the White House. Character is defined as what we do when we think no one is looking. By that standard, many critics say the Clintons are sorely lacking. On January 20, 2001, President Clinton issued 140 pardons on his last day in office. Those pardoned or receiving commuted sentences included cocaine trafficker Carlos Vignali and the biggest tax fugitive in U.S. history, Mark Rich. As much as those pardons reveal about Bill, an earlier pardon may have revealed even more about Hillary's character and her willingness to do anything to get elected. I remember the first Met game my dad took me to, and we were sitting at the very top of Shea Stadium. It was probably 1971. It was just a beautiful day out with, with my dad. You know, he loved the Mets. He loved his sports. That's one thing that I'll never forget, is sort of being in the car with him and being at the game with him, just enjoying his presence. It was an idyllic childhood, to be honest with you. Um, I couldn't have asked for a better childhood up until I was nine. My dad was a very decent, honest family man. As a matter of fact, on that day, January 24th, he was looking forward to coming home that Friday, celebrating my brother's 11th and my 9th birthdays. It was going to be a big family event for us. Francis Tavern has an extraordinary place in American history. It's where the Sons of Liberty met. It's where George Washington bid farewell to his officers at the end of the Revolutionary War. And it's also the place where Frank Connor, my father, was murdered in 1975. On January 24th, 1975, I was working a surveillance on the west side of Manhattan, and the sirens started to go off. Just an endless stream of fire trucks, police vehicles going down to the southern end of Manhattan. A short time later, turning on a radio, easy to find out that there had been a bombing at Francis Tavern. Nobody dreamt that this was a daytime bombing of a restaurant in New York City in the United States of America, because it simply was not the sort of thing that happened in America. The senseless bombing had been perpetrated by what was arguably the most active terrorist organization in U.S. history, the FALN. But in 1975, 
the FALN was a newly formed, previously unheard of organization that through deadly violence advocated complete independence for Puerto Rico. I kept hoping and thinking that maybe he's under rubble trying to get through and there's a mistake. It really didn't happen, that he was okay. My mom says now that all she wanted to do was run. She wanted to run out the door and keep running. I remember I was a little tiny nine-year-old and there was one of the guys that picked me up and I was sort of punching him in the back, not knowing what, how to react to something like that. Joe, this is the Bissell dining room at Francis Tavern. And this is the room that suffered most of the damage in the bombing on January 24th, 1975. The bomb was placed actually just on the opposite side of these doors. Waiters and some of the other witnesses remember seeing somebody come through this door carrying a large duffel bag. Uh, he looked around the room. One of the waiters was about to approach him and tell him to, that he had to leave when he stepped back out apparently left the bomb outside. This was a typical FALN device. It was a quantity of dynamite, right. uh, included propane tanks, which was one of their trademarks in building their bombs in the early days, and a simple timer, a wristwatch, altered to serve as a timer to set off the device. So he knew when he placed it that essentially the people that he was that he had seen were going to feel the impact of it. Absolutely. He knew that he was committing mass mur murder, no question about it. Where, where would my dad have been sitting in relation to this table? I believe your dad was sitting at the end of the table here, Joe, uh, and would have been one of the first people hit by the blast of the bomb. Joe, the bomb being just outside this door here, when it functioned, much of the blast came of course, through into this room, knocking down this door, and that shock wave would have taken everything in the room and just made missiles out of it. So you have victims that have pieces of glassware, pieces of silverware pushed into their bodies as a result of the blast. Do we know why they chose the time, the place, the day? The communique that they left said that they were trying to kill capitalist, imperialist pigs in Francis Tavern, and specifically cites Francis as being the target. Four died, and more than 50 were injured. It was a typical FALN operation, one of over 130 bombings between 1974 and 1983. But on that crisp winter day at Francis Tavern, no one could imagine what the future held for the murderous members of the FALN. Hillary's biggest problem running for the Senate was that she wasn't a New Yorker. And how is she going to appeal to the specific ethnic groups that make up the New York state electorate? So, in September 1999, right in the middle of her Senate campaign, she was approached by City Councilman Jose Rivera, who really is a spokesman for the Hispanic community in New York who gave her a packet urging the pardoning of the FALN terrorists. And included in the packet was a letter to Hillary asking her to use her influence on her husband to get these pardons granted. And two days later, they were. Freedom came today for most of the 14 Puerto Ricans who accepted President Clinton's controversial gift of clemency. Eleven of them, who describe themselves as nationalists, some others describe them as terrorists, were released from federal prisons around the country. It made no sense. Not one of the incarcerated FALN terrorists had requested clemency or had expressed any remorse. In fact, prior to that action, the Clinton administration had granted clemency in just three cases out of over 3,000 applications, according to the Office of the Pardon Attorney at the Justice Department. It was putting a political agenda of the Clintons above my father's life. Sandy Berger appeared on television a day or two after the pardons were granted or after the clemency was granted and stated that these people were not personally involved in violence. That's simply not the fact. In this case, these people were convicted of planting 36 bombs in Chicago. 
If that's nonviolence, then Mr. Berger's dictionary is a little bit different than mine is. The Department of Justice uh, received a memo from the FBI saying that under no circumstances should these people be released. The President of the United States, who had access to all this information, ignored the facts of the matter. You have to ask yourself, who benefited from this besides the terrorists themselves? It's my view that have concluded the only other person that could have benefited from this was Hillary Clinton. The Senate, on a 95 to 2 vote, later denounced President Clinton's FALN clemency. Candidate Clinton claims she is the most experienced. Her husband claimed she was intimately involved in his administration. And yet, Hillary said publicly she had, quote, no involvement in or prior knowledge of the decision. Obviously, she knew about it. Obviously, she asked Bill to do the pardons. And obviously, when she says she knows nothing about it, she's not telling the truth. How dare they? Um, my father was a decent, honest um, family man. And he was being forgotten or used as a political pawn by those people who didn't have his decency, didn't have his family values, and wasn't the kind of man that my father was. We've had only two father-son presidencies in the history of our nation. We may be on the verge of the first husband and wife commander-in-chiefs. Historically, Americans have never been keen on dynasties. So it's worth remembering that a vote for Hillary is a vote to continue 20 years of a Bush or a Clinton in the White House. American people deserve to know that their presidency is not for sale, the Lincoln bedroom is not for rent, and lobbyist money can no longer influence policy in the House or the Senate. The problem with nostalgia is what we tend to do is you only remember what you like. And you write, and you forget the parts that you didn't like. So what John Edwards is saying uh, about outmoded thinking and nostalgia is really, I think, expressing um, a reluctance to turn American democracy, which is very, I think, meritocratic, over to two families. And Hillary Clinton would represent the past in that, and a continuation of, I think, a dangerous trend to electing people because of uh, how much recognition they have rather than their intrinsic qualities. Finally, before America decides on our next president, voters should need no reminders of what's at stake, the well-being and prosperity of our nation. We uncovered a radio show that Eleanor Roosevelt, her heroine, did in 1934. Eleanor Roosevelt was asked during this show, when will a woman become president? Her answer, when a majority of the American people have trust and confidence in the integrity of her. And that's the challenge that Hillary faces. It's been said, and I agree with it, that this is the most personal political choice that Americans make. We're very interested in their personality traits, they're a person that they could trust, that they would like. That's where I think Hillary Clinton as a candidate has great defects. She's not accountable. She'll never be accountable personally for anything that she does. And her personality is such that she believes that the end justifies the means no matter what the, those means are. If she weren't married to Bill Clinton, what is there that she has accomplished in her life that would lead you to believe that she should become the most powerful person in the country. Which candidate is most likely to be able to be successful in protecting us from the threat from radical Islam? That is the central crisis of our time. If she reverts to form, Hillary Clinton will likely be in the future what she has been in the past, which is a person, a woman, a politician of the left. And I don't think that's going to be good for the security of the United States. She can't favor, English is the official language of government, has said she can't favor it. 85% of the American people favor English as the official language of government. I think there are a number of big issues where you'd have a very clear contrast. She favors liberal judges. 91% of the American people favor the right to say one nation under God. 
The bigger this campaign is, the bigger the choice is, the more trouble she's in. What will be important, though, and this is some baggage she has to deal with, is the idea of a co-presidency, the idea that Bill Clinton will be back in the White House. Because I think when he left the White House, people had had enough. I can't imagine that Americans want to go back to, to the 90s and the country being dragged into this, this ugly, dysfunctional family drama. I certainly don't see Hillary Clinton as someone who can unify the country. Uh, President Bush didn't. I don't think she would either. I think that we're at a very critical time in this country uh, that requires leadership. And uh, I can tell you, uh, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that uh, the Hillary Clinton I know is not equipped, not qualified to be our commander in chief. This vote comes down to one thing, liberty. Do you believe in liberty or don't you? Economic liberty, free speech, protecting our borders, uh, protecting our country from terrorism. The issue is liberty. We must never underestimate this woman. We must never understate her chances of winning. We mustn't be lulled into a state of security and complacency by the newfound moderation that she likes to talk about. And we must never forget the fundamental danger that this woman poses to every value that we hold dear. You see, I know her. This is one of those things that plays into the left-right game that unfortunately dictates a lot of uh, what's going on on the on the chessboard. So, so yes, I mean it is going to be shunted off into a Republican versus Democrat thing. And as I think you're uh, going to note in one of the related follow-ups, the Republicans are equally as guilty as this. So that isn't really the point. But again, in any universe approximating actual political reality, this would be something that would scuttle Hillary's chances at getting the the, uh, the presidency. I mean, what what she did with the emails is ridiculous. It is flagrantly illegal. There's, I mean, it's black and white. There's no two ways about it. What she did was illegal. She herself deleted a 32,000 emails saying, oh, they were personal emails. Trust me. Uh, it's, I mean, it's just absolute insanity. Um, of course, we know that <laughs> There's a lot of different factors that go into this. Bill and the fact that he is equally accused of the same things that Bill Cosby has been accused of that have completely scuttled Bill Cosby's career, namely rape. Yes, Bill Clinton has been actually sued for rape and settled out of court in the exact same way Bill Cosby did. But for some reason, you don't hear about that when it comes to Bill Clinton. Hmm, I wonder why. So um, again, I mean, this is going to be played into a left-right political game and... I imagine Hillary has a couple of defenses. One is going to be, oh, it's just the Republicans trying to attack me because I'm a Democrat. The other is, oh, it's just misogynists trying to attack me because I'm a woman. Oh, yeah, what could possibly go wrong? I, I really hope that we don't need to tell our regular viewers uh, and listeners th that you should not buy this uh, doll for your, your boy or girl. It's ridiculous. It's insane. It's not just the corporate surveillance, which is creepy enough and bad enough. And, and you know, they're tr basically trying to sell things back to your kids. But as we know, any data passing through the Internet, especially in the United States, is being tapped by the NSA. It is being cataloged and databased and tracked and surveilled and fed into the sentient world simulation in the bowels of the Pentagon with DARPA, creating, you know, fake avatars of actual human beings so that they can predict your behavior and all of the creepy stuff that we know is going on with all of the data passing through the internet. Please do not make your child into uh, just another test subject for the NSA and DARPA and all of these people to get their hands on that data. Hello, Barbie. Goodbye, privacy, as creepy new doll spies on your child. And we've got links to Christian Science Monitor going into this story, but we'll just take it from USA Today. High-tech talking Barbie a bad idea. Barbie the doll is about to become Barbie the techno-conversationalist. And one livid consumer advocacy group says, for the sake of the kids, Mattel must quash the new toy before it hits the shelves for the holidays. Hello Barbie is a $74.99 Wi-Fi connected doll that uses a microphone embedded in Barbie's belt buckle to record children's voices and transmit them to cloud servers where they'll be stored for up to two years. Mattel's tech partner, Toy Talk, leverages speech recognition with pre-programmed responses to keywords or phrases 
so that kids can feel like Barbie is responding to them. Now, comments aside of lonely kids with no family or parents paying attention to them, they're begging for a doll to act like it's interacting with them. But Mattel says it's simply doing what kids have been asking it to do for years. Quote, the number one request we receive from girls globally is to have a conversation with Barbie. And with Hello Barbie, we're making that request a reality, says Stephanie Coda Mattel's senior vice president of Global Blah Blah. What's more, for kids to use the techno doll, parents must sign on and ultimately will have access to their kids' recorded conversations, we swear. But Wednesday, officials at Campaign for a Commercial-Free Childhood, the aforementioned advocacy group, posted a petition on their site demanding that Mattel abandon the project. Quote, this is really about Mattel eavesdropping on a child's heart and soul and the most intimate things about their lives, said Susan Lynn, executive director of the group. The real problem, says Lynn, is that Mattel will now have the ability to listen in on kids at play, saying, quote, it's corporate surveillance in the home and exploitation where kids are most vulnerable around creative play, end quote. Now, James, I could go into the entire Simpsons episodes that have been done about this, where evil toy companies use you know, fake schools and toys that surveil them to sell things back to them. You could go into any of these numbers of, of directions. You and I have talked about the elf on the shelf, this sort of new neo-holiday tradition where an elf spies on your children through a video camera, and it's all fun and games. But there was also a story, James, and I thought you and I covered it here on New World Next Week, but I found it in my own Media Monarchy archives, and it goes back to December of 2010. Barbie Video Girl in FBI Crosshairs. There was a doll, and it was around the same amount of money. It had a great camera. It actually had a camera that almost rivaled some of the other sort of prosumer Canon 7Ds and some of these other kind of mid to high level in cameras. But back in 2010, the feds were warning oh my God, this Barbie video camera might be used for, for pedos and, and child pornography. They'll lure kids in. And they sort of used the what about the children kind of angle. Now, five years later, and whether we're talking about the NSA has all your communications anyway, ah, hell, whatever. Get your kid a doll that spies on them and records all their voices. What, what could possibly go wrong? DNA is turning us into a nation of suspects. That starts off with a very good encapsulation with a lot of hyperlinks um, talking about the ways that the government can um, know what you read, what you do, what you say. They can uh, predict what you will do. Um, they will soon know what you remember because of brain scanning technologies. Um, all of that creepy Orwellian stuff really is happening right now. And now add DNA to that list. And it's uh, even more comprehensive, the things that, uh, that can be found out about you. So don't feed your data to them with unthinkingly. And please don't support it by buying these types of toys for your children.